Uh, last year, when the Commonwealth Games authorities approached us uh, and needed someone to step in to host the 2026 Commonwealth Games uh, as a state, we were happy to help out. But of course, not at any price, and only if there was lasting benefit for Victorian communities and benefit for the whole state. What's become clear uh, is that the cost of hosting these games in 2026 is not the $2.6 billion which was budgeted and allocated and is sitting, uh, vast, vast majority of which has not been spent. Uh, it's not $2.6 billion, it is in fact at least $6 billion uh, and could be as high as $7 billion. And I cannot stand here and say to you that I have any confidence that that even $7 billion number would appropriately and adequately fund these games. I think it could be more than that. Now there's a whole range of reasons for that and today's not about uh, finding fault with those cost estimates. They are what our market soundings, uh, our consultations with industry, all of our pre-tender work tells us. Uh, six to seven billion dollars is well and truly too much for a 12-day sporting event. Uh, I will not take money out of hospitals and schools in order to fund an event that is three times the cost uh, as estimated and budgeted for last year. In terms of uh, where we go to from here, the uh, games will not proceed uh, in Victoria in 2026. Uh, we have informed Commonwealth Games authorities of our decision um, to seek to terminate the contract. Uh, and to not conduct, not, not host the games. Uh, meetings occurred, amicable and productive meetings occurred in London last night, and they will again continue uh, London time uh, later on uh, today. Uh, however, as I said, uh, $2.6 billion uh, was budgeted, uh, and that covered both legacy benefits, so ongoing important sporting upgrades and, and other physical infrastructure and other, uh, other elements, housing and other things of that nature across a number of regional hubs and more broadly some other regional communities. I want to come to that in just a moment. Uh, not all of that $2.6 billion was of course for legacy, uh, it was for um, security and transport and all manner of other uh, services if you like, all other uh, elements of putting on such a big event. So instead of proceeding with games that would cost six to seven billion dollars. We will not have the games and we will instead, today we're announcing a regional package of over two billion dollars and there are a number of features to that. Uh, first and foremost, each and every one of the permanent sporting facilities that were to be legacy benefits from the games will be built and the Deputy Premier will speak to that in just a moment. There is a very substantial regional tourism fund there will be uh, a substantial package of support for uh, community-based sport and perhaps most importantly there will be a one billion dollar boost for social and affordable housing right across regional Victoria not just in those hub cities but there will be uh, at least 1300 new homes constructed across regional Victoria. This represents a massive boost uh, and a direct response to what is perhaps the biggest challenge across regional Victoria and indeed across our state, and that is the supply of housing and the number of housing options that Victorians uh, have uh, before them. Uh, that is in many respects uh, the biggest and best lasting legacy that we can leave, somewhere to live uh, and a market that has more supply for those who need it. So in essence, when you add up all of, not the estimates, but the actuals, all the contemporary work that's been done with builders, with those who provide services, all of those who would contribute to running the Commonwealth Games in 2026, the cost is not $2.6 billion as estimated by senior departmental officials, external consultants, um, the government, as well as Commonwealth Games authorities. Uh, it is in fact at least six billion and could be as much as seven billion dollars and look I've made a lot of difficult calls, a lot of very difficult decisions in this job. This is not one of them. Uh, frankly six to seven billion dollars for a 12-day sporting event, we are not doing that. 
that does not represent value for money, that is all cost and no benefit. We will instead deliver all and more of the legacy benefits in housing, in sporting infrastructure, in tourism. Uh, we'll unpack all that tomorrow and throughout the week. There'll be further details of all of that, as well as the process to deliver that. Uh, that is a much better way to go forward. Uh, we're simply not going to invest that sort of money uh, and, and have to take it from key service delivery from other parts of government in order to deliver a 12-day sporting event. As I said, discussions have been uh, productive and cordial uh, with Commonwealth Games authorities. They will continue. Uh, what I'm not going to do today uh, is essentially negotiate with those Commonwealth Games authorities from the other side of the world via the media. Um, there'll be a full accounting uh, for the costs that have been incurred to this point. Uh, there'll be a full accounting of the value that we get from some of those costs in terms of the delivery of that legacy package that I've just spoken to and which Jacinta and Harriet will speak in more detail in just a moment. Uh, and there'll be a full accounting of the cost of the break of this contract. That's not settled. It's simply not finished yet. Uh, and it would be, I think, bad faith and, frankly, against the interests of taxpayers and all Victorians uh, if I was to try and conduct that negotiation uh, from the other side of the world at a press conference. That's not the way these things are done.